the first time I heard anything was himself talking in can, talking about, and I thought he was making a joke. He talked to, we were doing an interview with Kirsten Dunst, and so for Melancholia, and, um, and he said, my next film is a porn film with those two. And so <laughs> I thought he was making fun, and it was quite funny. Um, and then, yeah, and then much later on I read the script. Yeah, I just thought it was a joke and that he was, uh, it was a provocation. Um, and, and I didn't, I didn't want to put my hopes, you know, I didn't want to hope too much that he was just going to ask. The big thing for me was for him that, that I was realizing that he was asking me to do a third film. And I, it was such a blessing. And that's the way I, I always thought about it, that I didn't, you know, I didn't want it to, to, um, to think about it too much in case it wasn't true. I was very excited and surprised and I couldn't expect, I couldn't expect what I was going to read. So it was all a surprise and yes, of course, quite, terrifying um, also I didn't know when I w I knew that there would be two of us playing Joe so I didn't know when I came in um, and so yeah it was just such a big project to go through and you know again not understanding as as it was the same the same with antichrist I, I wasn't sure i was getting all the digressions and all the metaphors and um so a, a lot of the work for me was to understand what what both characters were saying even though joe doesn't really understand what Seligman is going on about all the time but still it was interesting for me and I don't know. It's so rich. It's such a. It was such a rich script, and so, so intense. Um, so what? What can I say? It's just very scary and exciting, and yeah, exhilarating at the same time. And that's what I felt when I saw the film. She uses them, of course, but it doesn't mean that she she doesn't have any feeling for them. Uh, she just knows what to use them for, what she needs. Uh, she's convinced at the beginning that she should get into that little, what's it called, the little flock. Um, and so, yeah, she, she follows, she follows her beliefs until she's stricken by something stronger, which is love. <laughs> She's not very optimistic towards uh, humankind. Um, so in that sense, well, I, yeah, again, I, I don't agree with her, but I do love her very much. I think she's, she becomes, uh, I thought she was touching. It's weird when you've seen yourself in a film, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's weird talking that way, but 
she's very defendable. I was very, very nervous at first. I was nervous about what I heard on the film, that, you know, um, I needed it to be very clear that actors were not going to perform sex. So as long as that was clear, then I was fine. I think I was more disturbed when I did the post-syncing because when you see just a few images and you suddenly feel that the whole film is just that. And so I was, I was quite scared of the little insights I got into the film. Seeing the film as a whole, I have absolutely no problem. And on the contrary, I think it's part of the film, it's the beauty of the film, it's that it's a film about flesh and the crudity of, of sex and there's, it would have been a total nonsense to be prude and to, I don't know, hide stuff. So, but I know that Lars said, would you be, uh, how did he put it? He, he asked me, would, would I feel, if people believed that I was having sex, was it just to know what my limits were in terms of morale or uh, morality. Um, and I think I'm fine with that, as long as, you know, I know what I've done. <laughs> It was like being in a different film, but it, when I see the film, it's not. It's the same film. Uh, but on the set, it was a little strange. Just because, um, well, because you're using actors just for the sex. And, um, and yeah, it becomes very specific. <laughs> I think I met him when he was in a bad place. I mean, he wasn't very well. He wasn't well. And he got better until now, I think. But he's very mysterious, and I, it's nice that it stays that way. Uh, I think he knows everything about me, <laughs> physically. Uh, and what goes on in my head. I think he reads me like a, an open book, but I can't read him. And I, I kind of like the, I like our relationship. I, I'm very touched by him and I think I've said it often because I felt it was so true with Antichrist and again with Melancholia, with um, Kirsten's character, but I feel that he's putting himself into those uh, women characters and uh, I feel that it, it makes the characters so legitimate and so true. And uh, the fact that he's a man it's even better. So all the, I don't know, all, there's a lot of um, ambiguity that I, I really like in those characters and a lot of depth and that you, you can't read anywhere else, I think. With this film, for me, what what changed a lot, and I know he's done this in the past, of course, but 
And it, it was in melancholia, a little, at the beginning anyway, but it's the humour. Uh, it wasn't there in Antichrist. And in this film, it's a, I feel that it's a very important part of the film and the way the, the story is told. Um, and it's, again, it's him and his humour and I think it's great. And you need it for, I, I feel that you need it for that story, especially. I think the weirdest for me was uh, having to put on this wound uh, at, I can't remember, five in the morning before. It was, I think it took two hours to put on. Uh, and just standing there with the, this sweet man, but you know, uh, working between my legs was really weird. And we were making it as um, as discreet as possible. I mean, I could hide myself and stick things myself so that he wouldn't see things that I didn't want him to see. But in the end, he was still putting his nose there and painting um, the flesh and... Um, that was the weirdest, yeah. <laughs>